And in Romans 5, verses 7 through 8, the Apostle Paul says, for no one will scarcely die for a righteous person. Though perhaps for a good person, one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. See, brothers and sisters, that's how God loves us. So there's a new directive. We don't just love others in some vague sort of superficial way. And we don't love others as we love ourselves. But we love others like Jesus loves us. Agape love. That's the Greek word that's being used here in John 15 for love. So what is agape love? Well, we have a working definition that we say around here at McGregor quite often. So I want you to repeat it with me. Agape love. Let's try that again. Agape love is an unconditional, self-sacrificial commitment to the well-being of other people. That's agape love. And that's how God loves his children. So now it's our directive. Jesus provides the directive, but then he provides what the directive looks like in the demonstration. That'd be letter B on your outline. The demonstration can be found in verse 13. I want you to look at it in your Bibles with me. Look at what he says there. Greater love has no one than this, that someone laid down his life for his friends. Now, that may be a familiar verse to you. you. You may have seen verse 13 on a military memorial or even mentioned at a military funeral. But brothers and sisters, the context of this kind of love is that we sacrificially love one another. So the starting place where agape love must begin is in the local body of Christ that you're a member of. It's just another reason that church membership is so important. We can't obey this directive fully that we love one another as Jesus has loved us if we're not a member of a local church. And I praise God that we have a reputation here at McGregor for being both a giving church and a loving church. But one of the areas that I pray we will grow in as a church, starting with myself, is in the way that we sacrificially love one another. Christian love follows the sacrificial model of Jesus. And Jesus is essentially saying to the disciples here, this demonstration, this is what agape love looks like. Verse 13. And husbands, <laughs> there's a really important point of application here for us. Because there's a similar command just for us in Ephesians 5.25, where the apostle Paul says, husbands, love your wives as Christ have loved the church and gave himself up for her. You want to guess at which word for love the apostle Paul uses there? Agape. The unconditional, self-sacrificial commitment to the well-being of your wife. Gentlemen, do you know why we as husbands are commanded to love our wives that way? Because it's hard. <laughs> and you need Jesus to do it, amen? We're not commanded to love our children. We love our children. But it's their way easier. She's a challenge sometimes. And look, guys, she's commanded to respect you, and that's no cakewalk either. But as husbands, we, are, we have a very specific command to agape our wife like Jesus agaped us. So that means we're going to serve her in similar ways to how Jesus served the disciples. We're going to lead her and teach her and pray for her and forgive her and encourage her and sacrifice for her all in ways that are similar to Jesus. It also means that from time to time we will absorb the wrath of our wife's sin. Also similar to Jesus. Brothers, we are not Jesus. But we are to agape her in ways that point our wife to Jesus. Now let's be clear, the application in John 15 is not just limited to husbands. Jesus gave this directive and this demonstration for all who follow him. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down their life for their friends. 
John MacArthur says that only those who abide in him have the capacity to divinely love as Jesus loved. See, what Jesus is doing here is he's explaining how he loves all those who abide in him. And yes, the overt command for us is to agape one another, but the foundational underpinnings of our agape for each other is his agape for us. 